So welcome back everybody to part two of this van bed build. I'm actually starting to confuse myself a bit here because yesterday I was filming myself drilling a hole in the side of the van, which just for the record was absolutely terrifying. But I had to do that before I finished the bed because I couldn't screw the ply or any of the woodwork to the wall until the cable was in. So I'm kind of working backwards a little bit here because I wanted this video to come after part one and then the drilling of the socket and everything will be in the next video. So it's kind of like I'm filming them backwards and it's a bit confusing to me. I've got to really think about what I'm doing though because although I've got lots of height on this wall for the electrical system, I haven't got much width because Joss's bed is pretty much going to take up the whole of the available space that I have because we've got the water tank in. So I've only really got the width of the wheel arch to go along and then the bed actually ends around about where these screws are. So I've got about that much room and I've got a decent amount of height but I've also just put this battery in and it's a bit bigger than what I thought it was going to be. So I'm not really too sure how this is going to work. So I'm going to try and build the bed frame around what I think is going to work with the batteries. But I guess it's going to be a bit of a trial and error. And yeah, I'm just going to try and figure something out and see what we can come up with. Well, nothing ever quite goes to plan, does it? I've spent about two and a half hours trying to figure out how to build this and how on earth we're gonna get three of these batteries and all the other electrical components in this van when the only room we've got is like this area here. I think I've sussed it out though. Essentially, the only way we're gonna get these batteries in the van is by stacking them on top of each other because we've got enough vertical height just but we haven't got enough width i want to be able to stack these batteries safely so they're not going to come tumbling over and kill joss when he's sleeping or whatever and i also want to be able to access them i want to be able to change them if i need to change them and yeah it, it was really quite tricky to think about how i was going to do this the way that i've decided to do it is that the batteries will go in here and slide in like that and then I've just cut three of these pieces of leftover batten when we frame the wall and it actually fits really well to just sit there in front of the battery and then I can just screw that down to hold it in place and then that will stop the battery from sliding out while we're driving or anything else and it won't be able to jump over it because I've got timber at the back of this about two millimeters above the battery so there's no way it can jump up and it can't slide out i think just the one batten's going to be fine i could always have a second one God, i can't get it out now a bit higher up perhaps there if i wanted to but i think just the one at the bottom is going to be fine so then when it comes to changing it servicing it or even attaching things to it i can take this out and then slide the battery out like that and then do what i need to do to it and then the same will apply 
for the other ones. So that will slide in there, secured in place with that, and then the same on the top as well. But obviously this is gonna be screwed to the wall. I just haven't done that yet, because I wanna make sure that this works before I fix everything to the wall. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of that. That's taken me a long time to build. And yeah, I think it's gonna work really well. Let's put that down there. Oh, the only problem with having the three batteries here is that the rest of the components I was gonna put there because I thought these batteries are smaller, but they're gonna have to go above the wheel arch along here because there's literally nowhere else they can go. And I did say to Joss that he can have this as like a little shelf in his bedroom to like put his phone on or whatever. But unfortunately, he's not gonna be able to have that anymore because it's gonna be full of electrical stuff. Sorry, Joss. Okay, everyone, so it's another day and I've just finished fitting the consumer unit to the wall over here. I've run it all through the power and everything and luckily everything works and we're all good to go. So I can now officially finish fitting the bed frame, put everything back together. I'm gonna to put this socket somewhere. Haven't quite decided where it's gonna go yet. Um, but yeah, I can carry on finishing the bed and finishing this video. <laughs> So there we go everyone, bed frame is officially 99% complete. I'm one length of timber short, so this last joist at the back, I haven't managed to put in. I also ran out of screws as well, so I didn't finish screwing in these um, like noggin things that I did. I wasn't too sure the best way to fix these joists in place, so I figured if I use these offcuts that I've got loads of, I can screw those down and then I can screw the joist into it to hold it steady and then obviously once the ply's on it as well then that will kind of like tie it all together anyway. But the water tank's in there, that's nice and secure, that's not going anywhere and then underneath oh, we should have plenty of room for the electric, so the three batteries up there. Oh god, the consumer unit's going to go in there, I think the battery charger's going to go up there and then we'll have like the DC charger, the solar charger when we actually eventually get around to getting that. And then I think that's probably it. <sighs> I was looking up um, electronics last night and I didn't realise how big inverters are. So essentially to get a mains plug in a van it has to go through an inverter. I kind of thought that it would fit just in one of the, um, the things there but it's absolutely ginormous. But we're not really worrying too much about the inverter at the moment anyway, because as long as we've got mains power coming in, then Becky can work inside the van when she's away, because she'll be plugged into the hookup anyway. And as long as we've got heating, and obviously somewhere to sit and sleep, then that's pretty much all we need. I think cooking wise, we're just gonna make do with um, like a portable camping gas stove thingy. We will eventually get an induction hob because we don't want to have any gas in the van at all other than the emergency backup gas stove but we don't want any gas tanks or anything like that so we're going to need to get the induction hob which is one of the main reasons we need to get the inverter because to power the induction hob we need quite a big battery set up and quite a big inverter to do it. I think the inverter itself is about 740 pounds or something so it's quite beefy and then obviously the cable for that as well is like ridiculous but we'll go over that when it arrives. But that's the bed frame finished anyway apart from this last joist so 99% finished. I'm really pleased with how it came out and I think that our decision to 
do the batten up the walls and then the ply and then doing this all out of timber other than the fact that it's probably quite heavy I think it was a really good way to do it I think Joss is going to be quite happy here as well it's just about wide enough for his mattress I think it's three foot four inches wide and the standard single mattress is three foot so literally just enough room for the mattress and that's about it but I might make him some sort of cupboard area at the other end of the water tank because that's kind of a bit of dead space and then I think behind the water tank at this end we're just going to have four camping chairs and like stuff like that but I've really enjoyed building this I absolutely love working with wood and I hope you guys have enjoyed watching it as well I've tried really hard to find a balance of getting the job done and filming it at the same time I know there's lots of time lapses but it's quite a time consuming job to do well the whole van's quite time consuming so naturally there's just going to be time lapses next week though we've got the video about the hookup socket which is quite interesting so make sure you come back for that and then beyond that, I think we're going to start looking at the electrical setup, the 12 volt, charging the battery and all that kind of thing. Maybe figuring out where lights are going, sockets are going, stuff like that. So make sure you come back for that as well. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a massive thumbs up if you did. We'll see you guys in the next one. So until then, have a safe drive, stay alive, have a lovely day, try not to spill anything, and we'll see you next time.